Hello and welcome back. I'm Lucy, I'm a fine art beader and I paint with beads. Today for our filming we've moved into a different room so um, the acoustics might be a little bit different but because we're trying to use as much natural light as we can we thought this room might be a bit more consistent for quality for, for filming so we'll try in here uh, and see how it goes. So today I'm going to be looking at using a fringe foot to create fringing on a sewing machine. Now this particular uh, fringe foot is for the Genome machine and I'm going to be doing it on this machine, the Genome 5270 QDC. However, the principles will be the same or similar for other manufacturers, but do check your manufacturer's information and recommendations. And not all sewing machines will have a fringe foot as, as an accessory, so you need to double check. Okay. Remember, you can post any questions you want onto our community post channel, um, and uh, we can answer any questions there and share that with the rest of the community too. So first of all, I just like to say, um, don't let anybody tell you that, that using a fringe foot um, is easy because it is not, it is not. And it takes a little bit of getting used to and a little bit of planning, a little bit of practice um, before you get it absolutely consistently correct in the way that you want it. So it's pro probably one of the trickier techniques to use on a sewing machine. In fact, I, I felt my my first attempt was so rubbish, I wasn't sure I was ever going to get it right, but I did in the end. And in fact, I was so frustrated, I came up with my own method, an easy, lazy method of doing a fringe all in one go, um, without any trouble at all. And I'm going to show you that, and that's a little bit later in the video, and you should be able to see the time code on screen now. Okay, so that's a really easy way and you can skip ahead to that if you want. And it also means that when I've gone through this, I've really tried to improve the workflow of using fringe, the fringe feet and, and the, the straight, straight presser feet as, as we go as well. There tend to be two, two types of fringe, a loop variety and a cut variety. And you create both of these beginning with the same two steps generally. Okay, first you use the fringe foot and create loops with the top thread in a zigzag stitch and then using a straight stitch sew and secure along one edge of the loops and that's for both the loops and the cut variety as I said. First of all the foot itself. There is a fin or some people refer to it as a claw which runs front to back and it is there to ensure that the top threads have further to travel side to side when you're doing your zigzag. And the zigzag needs to be tightly packed, so you need a short stitch. And when you install your fringe foot, be sure that your needle passes over the claw or fin. And again, your manufacturer will be able to explain how to make adjustments um, in order to let the needle clear the fin. For this particular model it is not a snap-on foot so you actually have to unscrew the foot holder and then screw on the foot. Now that's not a particular problem as you will see in a moment. I do see some people constantly switching feet um, but you can improve upon that workflow process and we'll go through that in a moment. So that was all a bit of a befuddle. So what instead I'm going to do is I've got a, a Fat Max by Stanley, which is holding my little screw in position on there. And I'm going to try and attach that first. That's, and it's a long-handled thing, not the, the short-handled 
variety that comes with the machine. And then if I push it, it will let go of it. There you go, and that's on there. So the next bit, the next trick is to get the foot in. So if we try and rotate it at an angle, push it up a little bit. Again, I can get my long screwdriver and really turn it into place. Now that is a great improvement, but it's still not the best if you're having to take this foot on and off all the time. Okay, so we've applied the foot. Oh, and there are so many things that can affect the success and consistency of your fringe. Um, and that's what really makes it so tricky. So as for material, I think a really quite sturdy material is best, or if not, you might need to back it. And I had to experiment a little bit beforehand uh, until I got what I wanted, and, and you might have to as well. Um, and I'm actually going to use two threads on this machine, and yes, the needle threader, the automatic needle threader, can do two threads at the same time through, through the needle. And I'll just show you that now. So here goes. And I am using um, the Genome embroidery threads and the special bobbin thread um, as, as well in the bobbin. Step one, making the loops. Now, with the fringe foot on the machine, you're going to be doing a zigzag stitch and in order to get the largest loops if you want large loops you need to max out that zigzag width and you also need to scrunch up the stitches so you need the, the smallest the minimum that you can go to on in terms of a stitch length you also need to think about the tension in the upper threads and you really really need to reduce that to very low indeed and there's so many things to remember this. This is where it can all go wrong if you forget to set one of these um, elements or, or you don't do it quite right. Um, but once you've set the zigzag, stitch width, stitch length and the tension, then you're ready to go. So let's see it in action now. Now you have to be really careful and removing the material from the machine. So pull it out backwards and hold onto the threads as much as you can because they will tighten up if you don't. And you may even pull out the bobbin thread completely before you are ready to do that. Scary bit alert. Now pull out the bobbin thread. So what's stopping this all coming out and falling apart? Well, nothing. First, I need to prepare the fringing before I approach the machine. So I'm going to do some finger pressing the thread on the back side where I'm going to be doing the, the, the securing um, up. So it's lying flat and up. And I need to finger press the thread on the top down the way. Then you'll have to decide whether it's better on the front or the back side. I found 
both work for different reasons. Sometimes I can't sew on the top, but I, I can sew on the bottom and vice versa. You're just going to have to test it and see what works best for you. Um, but you must have your, your, your thread nicely pressed down with your fingers in order to get a, a nice consistent result. So next you need to secure the fringe. So you need to remember all of this. You need to first of all reset your thread tension to a normal tension at the top and set your stitch to a straight stitch. Now here's the clever bit. If you have a machine where you can adjust the needle drop left or right or center or anywhere in between, then you could use this in preference to having to take off the, the presser foot each time you want to just do a straight stitch. Now you'll have to test that. It may be that your, your um, fringe foot is a bit too rough and will catch on the fringe itself. Um, but I have used it, used it with the fringe foot, just getting that straight stitch, move the needle drop to one side and hey presto, I've so much improved my workflow. It, it's, that's a, a really good hint and tip. So now we're going to sew along and secure what that edge of the fringe and sometimes I might run over it a couple of times or because this is short I might reverse uh, and to secure it even more firmly. Mm, so this one didn't go so well. I caught some of the loops in the securing stitches. So I think some of the loops will be stuck and I'll have to cut some of them. Yeah, some are stuck. What a mess. Caught there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cut them making sure the loops are as long as possible to match the front. and there's a long loop. So I'm just going to snip it off. It won't be noticed. This really isn't my um, greatest result. And the thing about this type of fringe, it's quite bulky and unsightly at the back. And it's so bulky it's quite difficult to do another uh, line of fringing right next to it. It can be quite difficult. Hmm. So here's my real easy all-in-one fringing technique. You need your fringe foot, um, two threads if you want in the machine and uh, a simple overlocking stitch. Uh, on this particular machine you can use stitch number nine on either mode one or two and that overlocking stitch will automatically stitch down the side uh, without you having to go back and secure it at all. I'm going to cut it now. you'll see that the fringe is different. It does sit up, so it's got a different effect. The advantage is here that I also had less bulk in material and, and in, in threads at the back. It's much neater. And if I want to sew really closely, I can use a little bit of magic tape or some some simple tape like that is not too sticky and so right along the edge. So I hope you have enjoyed this. 
fringing really is quite a challenging technique, um, but stick with it and see what you can do. Um, do let us know. Do, do share what you create on the community channel, um, if you'd like, and ask any questions as well. So stay tuned for some more. Uh, we'll see you soon. Please like, share and subscribe. Bye for now.